Hello, I'm Cates Beware, Chief of the Division of Sleep Medicine at Eastern Virginia Medical School. It is rare that someone playing soccer, or basketball, or tennis has difficulty staying awake regardless of the amount of sleep or partying the night before. The likelihood of falling asleep increases as activity level decreases. A database from the state of Georgia in the USA indicates that 5% of hunting injuries result from falling asleep and falling from a tree while quietly waiting for prey. Fortunately, a falling hunter rarely collides with anyone on the way down. As risky as falling asleep in a tree can be, falling asleep in an automobile ups the ante. Sitting in a comfortable car protecting from the elements is an even easier place to fall asleep, particularly during the monotony of a long drive. An unguided car on the highway has a much better chance of crashing into and killing someone than the sleeping deep woods hunter does. In the Sleep Disorder Center, to avoid the risk to patients and the experimenter of testing sleepy drivers during an actual drive and to avoid the expense of fixing crashed cars, we use a driving simulator. After a 10 minute practice city drive, the test drive is 60 minutes of quiet country drive. We examine eye movements, brain waves, body temperature, and heart rate, all of which can change as a driver becomes sleepy. The most important measure, however, is how much the driver weaves on the road. Sleepiness, like drinking alcohol, destabilizes the car's position on the road. Sleep-deprived driving and alcohol driving are similarly deadly. When sitting in a sleep center during the day, healthy adults fall asleep in 35 minutes when asked to stay still but awake. Sleep-deprived patients and those with sleep problems fall asleep much more quickly. This should be an alerting thought for those of us who drive regularly for more than 35 minutes. In the USA, 40 to 50,000 people die yearly in traffic accidents. Up to 20% are thought related to fatigue and sleepiness. Estimates for China suggest that the death toll is approximately 100,000 with presumably a similar number of fatigue and sleep-related deaths. The point is that alert driving keeps people alive. Just as important as knowing how to get a good night's sleep is learning what it takes to stay awake. These include getting sufficient sleep, that is, seven to eight hours per night for most people, having regular bed and arising times, taking regular breaks when driving, and using caffeine judiciously. Rolling down the window and turning on the radio do not work. Please remember these for your family, for your sake, and for me, a fellow driver. <laughs>